Hello, my name is Andy. I am the village idiot. And I'm armed with a car and a GoPro. And an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to the city of Leeds. And for the second time in not very many weeks, once again, we're on the outskirts of Garforth. Another one, another parish that has part of Garforth within its borders. But most of it is taken up by what's behind these trees. Welcome to Sturton Grange. Sturton Grange is a civil parish in the city of Leeds. It had a population of 417 at the 2001 census, which reduced to 403 at the 2011 census. The thumbnail for this video and the introduction display a Garforth sign, because effectively this is an area of Garforth and you would be hard pushed to find any signs that say Sturton Grange on them. Sturton Grange's population is concentrated in the northwest of its boundaries, where it touches the unparished area that is Garforth. Garforth in general owes its size to expansion in the 17th and 18th centuries, during which the local land-owning Gascoigne family, yes we've met them before, ran several coal mines in the area. More recent expansion can also be traced to a combination of overall economic success in Leeds, and that Garforth is served by transport links. Sturton Grange is a good example of that expansion, as most of the houses here are new builds. There's a sense of community here though still, highlighted by this little garden, in remembrance of those lost to the coronavirus. These flowers are pretty too by the roadside, forming part of Garforth in Bloom. Demographically, Sturton Grange's population is heavily based around those of working age. More than 73% of people here are aged 18 to 65. Here's a fun stat for you though, only 91.3% of people here are white British. That's the lowest we've seen so far anywhere on the channel. Where the boundaries touch Garforth, there's a small industrial area and a roundabout which isn't exactly like your usual donut. <laughs> I don't know whether this has been done purposely, but you can walk through the center of this roundabout. Look, there's a drop section there. And it looks like you, <laughs> whether you're supposed to do this, I don't know, but I'm doing it just because I, I felt like it. <laughs> it looks like you can just walk through here to the other side without having to cross the road twice effectively. In general, the area Sturton Grange covers isn't all that special. It's just the northwestern fringes of Garforth. However, there are some interesting things to talk about. For example, Garforth Town Football Club play here and they are currently members of the Northern Counties East League Premier Division and play at Wheatley Park, which we'll go to shortly. There are no major amenities of note, but what's behind these trees we saw at the beginning is perhaps the thing that would be Sturton Grange's claim to fame. The road network is good too, with the A642 and the M1 providing easy access to the area. And you can catch a bus out here too, there's a regular service toward Leeds. Garforth Town's football ground is the most obvious local landmark. The club was established in 1964 as Miners Arms, a Sunday league team based at the pub of the same name. The club initially played on a council pitch in nearby Swillington, as there were no facilities available in Garforth. When they joined the West Yorkshire League in 1976, they bought land at Breelands Lane, a former council rubbish dump, to build a new ground. In 1998, they moved to Wheatley Park. The ground has a capacity of 3,000, of which 278 is seated and 200 covered. The record attendance of 2,428 was set for a Northern Premier League Division 1 North match against Chester on the 29th of April 2011.
So whilst Garforth Town Football Club falls within Sturton Grange's boundaries, this park doesn't. It's right next to it, but the parish boundary does this weird thing where it cuts this out, this bit out. Uh, so these houses you can see opposite here, they all are, well, I think most of them are within the boundaries. And, the, and it sort of cuts down here, the boundary, to include the, the, football, the football ground. But it means that this park is not within it which is weird, considering it's right next to it. This is how it is, I suppose. For notable landmarks, look no further for starters than the small industrial area. On Isabella Road, you'll find the base of Ginetta Cars Limited. Motor racing fans will know that name. They're a British specialist builder of racing and sports cars. Ginetta was founded in 1958 in Woodbridge, Suffolk. The company have moved around the country a few times, including to Essex, back to Suffolk and even to Scunthorpe for a while, when they required bigger premises. Here's a listed structure for you, it's a milestone on the western side of the A642, south of its junction with the M1 motorway. It's in stone with a triangular section with a rounded top and has an overlay in cast iron. The M1 passes through the northern parts of Sturton Grange's boundaries and this is the part of the M1 which was constructed in 1999 as part of the A1-M1 link. So the motorway junction is actually a parish boundary. If you look at the junction, imagine there's a line right through the centre of it. Everything to the right hand side of that line where it says the south and A1 and north where the M1, that's all Sturton Grange. The other way that belongs to Parlington. Junction 47 is known as Parlington Interchange, named after the estate we saw last week. It's a pretty normal junction laid out like most, with a roundabout above the main carriageway. Highways England upgraded the northbound exit slip road at Junction 47 to improve safety and congestion in January 2021, which resulted in a few road closures. It looks pretty good now though. Most of the parish's area is used for agriculture and if you look at an aerial photograph of Sturton Grange, you might mistake this next thing for solar panels. That's because from the air, the greenhouses on this massive farm in shop now look very similar. Soft fruit is grown here on an industrial scale. The farm is the base for Annabelle's Deliciously British, a strawberry farm headed by Annabelle Makin Jones. So you'd need to look at the overhead map to see exactly how big this place is. I'm telling you, it's colossal. You can only see a small bit of it here. Trust me, Annabelle's strawberries, it goes for miles. It, well, what seems like miles, not literally miles. But you look at the overhead shot and you think, wow, that's a lot of strawberries. Now clearly, at the moment, not all of the uh, strawberry uh, beds, I don't know what you call them, they're not all in use at the moment, it's out of season, it's, uh, it's winter of course at the moment, so yeah, they're not all in use. But I imagine some will be, probably the ones that are closer to Sturton Grange itself. Okay, so I've temporarily come out of uh, Sturton Grange's boundaries now. I'm actually in the unparished area of Garforth, I'm on Braemar Drive. And the reason for this is because I wanted to have a look at this particular track right here because I wasn't sure if this was a public footpath or not, and it turns out it is. There you go. Now, this track is called Sturton Grange Lane, and there's plenty of streets around this part of Garforth which make reference to Sturton in some way, shape or form. But this one, I think, is the only one that actually leads down towards it. I'll, I'll, walk, it, I'll walk down it a little way. I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to take me all the way towards Sturton Grange. But we'll get as close as we can. Let's see what we can do. This footpath runs right through the strawberry farm, although you must not stray from the footpath. It's clearly marked so that you don't get lost. We do, though, get a better, closer look at the strawberry farm and its greenhouses. These were all empty, but I imagine they do get full in the summer months. Annabelle's Deliciously British is one of the best-selling brands in Booths, the chain of high-end supermarkets in the north of England. We've seen a Booths store before in Gilberdyke. In the far distance over these fields is a large white property. That, according to Google Maps, is Sturton Grange, and Annabelle's farm is based at Sturton Grange Farm. Obviously, the house and the farm are private, but from the public footpath you're entitled to film. So here's a zoomed-in shot of the house and the farm without being in any way intrusive. 
The farm is also a base for Kern and Nagel, a logistics company, and there are several large warehouses here. Okay, I'm still 100% on the public footpath, just in case anyone's wondering. So what it does is it goes past these uh, strawberry field farm, whatever you want to call it. And on the, on the right here, we've got a caravan park. Uh, and then I think it just runs towards the main road, the A656. So at this point, I'm going to turn round. I have caught a glimpse of Sturton Grange, the house. Uh, I'm gonna use my phone instead of the GoPro because I can zoom right in just to show you what that looks like. And then we'll head back to the car. Okay, I've just got one more thing I want to talk about and that is the railway line because the Leeds to Selby line runs through Sturton Grange to the south and uh, in a moment hopefully I'm gonna catch I'm gonna catch a train if I time this right so uh, yeah the line is behind these railings let's see if we can catch one the Leeds to Selby railway runs through the southern parts of Sturton Grange where we are now is a footpath which isn't within the boundaries but it's the easiest place to see the line from and you do get a good look at the other side of Sturton Grange too from here it would be a little remiss of me not to include East Garforth Railway Station at this point, as it's just yards away. The station was opened by West Yorkshire Metro on the 1st of May 1987 to serve the new housing developments in the area. The station is an unstaffed halt and has wooden platforms with shelters on each one. It's located about half a mile from the main Garforth station. Mondays to Saturdays, there's a half hourly service to Leeds with alternating services continuing to Bradford Interchange and Halifax. Eastbound, there are hourly services to York and Hull. Right, okay, that's pretty much it for the parish of Sturton Grange. I did come out of Sturton Grange's boundaries again just to get the station and to capture a couple of trains there, but I'm not out of it by much, as you can tell from seeing the house again down that little... Uh, track the other way anyway that is Sturton Grange there's no picture bit today because it's another small one doesn't really warrant one uh, and that's it and I'll see you somewhere else in Leeds next time I've been Andy and this has been the parish of Sturton Grange I've been the village idiot and I'm out mm -hmm.